So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start the construction of our birdhouse. So here is an example. Um, and we'll get to how do you apply all these um, fun little features as we go through the process. So you've got several stencils that you'll need. You'll have, I know it's a little bit glary, but you'll have the roof. And then you'll have the base or the foot. And the door is optional, but um, I wanted to provide you a stencil that is optional. And then, of course, you have the wall or the belly or, the, um, you know, the main structure um, as a stencil as well. But we don't need all of these right away. The first two stencils that we need are the wall of your birdhouse and the foot. So we're going to go ahead and roll out a slab. We're going to do a little prep work to it before we actually cut out of our cut out our stencils. Make sure that you use your rip tool to compress your clay and check for, air, for any air pockets that you might have. Remember that it's just a real light kind of smoothing pressure over both sides of your slab piece. The next thing I'm gonna do is place my wall stencil on top of my slab and then take my stencil texture and place it on top of the slab as well as the stencil. And I'm just gonna mark where I'm going to press this um, design into the clay. I'm making it slightly bigger so it gives me a little bit of wiggle room um, for when I put the actual wall stencil back on and cut it out. The next step is incredibly important. You must put cornstarch on your clay to keep the stencil from getting stuck. Simply brush or sprinkle it onto the slab and make sure anywhere the stencil is going to sit, that is where you have cornstarch. So pretty much over the entire surface of your slab, but definitely in between those little marks that you've made. Next, you're going to want your texture stencil, a rolling pin, or a pony roller, and a rib tool. You're going to use your fingers to gently press the stencil into the clay, then use your rib tool for additional pressure. And you'll kind of go back and forth between using your fingertips and your rib tool. You really should kind of start to see the stencil kind of press into the clay. Make sure you're holding it on one side as you pull the rib across the stencil. Be careful that you're not grabbing the stencil and then ripping it. You don't want to do that, so make sure that it is laying flat against the clay. And notice I'm kind of following it up with my free hand, just kind of smoothing out any kind of maybe crumbs that I might have caused from the rib. But like I said, that stencil should kind of start to set down into that clay. Once you feel like you've applied enough pressure, you're going to take your rolling pin and you're going to flatten out the clay that is now underneath that stencil. And this is just going to kind of smooth out that slab for you and compress that texture even more. Once you're ready, you're going to remove the stencil and then you're gonna line it up on the other half of your slab. Notice that I'm going to go ahead and overlap the stencil on a previous section that I've already applied into the clay. This is gonna ensure that the actual design lines up really well for you. If for whatever reason 
you might have like an edge from the side of the stencil, go ahead and just kind of real lightly smooth that out with your rib tool and make sure that you apply some additional cornstarch in that area. Then reline it back up and repeat the process that you just did. Apply some pressure with your fingertips and then go back through with your rib tool and then once more with the rolling pin. All right, so our next step is to get our birdhouse wall stencil and place it on top of our texture. You want to pick kind of like the best area. So that's what I'm kind of looking for. I'm smoothing in kind of any area that might have a burr on it. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be right in the middle, but you do want to leave yourself an edge. Once you have picked that section that you're going to have the stencil, you're going to grab your needle tool and you're going to cut right along the edge of the stencil. Notice that I'm holding the edge of the stencil with my free hand so it doesn't kind of bend up or move. Once you have this done, pull your stencil off. And if you have enough space on this slab for your foot, then you can go ahead and cut that out. Um, if you got any texture on it, then, you know, make sure that you smooth that out. And then you would do this, you know, your foot doesn't have to have any texture on it. So, um, I mean, it could if you wanted it to, but if you're going to apply texture to the foot, make sure it's on the whole thing. So my texture was only on half of this section of slab. So I'm going to rib this and then I'm going to lay my stencil right back on top of this piece of slab. And then I'm going to cut it out with my needle tool. When you cut out the circle, make sure that your needle tool is straight up and down so the needle tool is going towards the ceiling. Do not have it at an angle. All right, at this point, we're going to gather all of our scraps that are around our two pieces of our birdhouse and we're gonna wedge it up. Do not leave your extra clay in slab form because it will dry incredibly fast. So move your pieces out of the way and actually wedge it on the table. Then put it in your spare bag, maybe even put some water on it so it keeps its moisture. You're gonna use this extra clay for your attachment pieces on your birdhouse. When you're wedging, make sure you're applying pressure with the heel of your hands and pushing in with the sides of your hands to keep the clay all compressed. So push down, roll towards you, and then push down again. You're applying pressure, but not so much that you're stretching the clay out and getting it stuck to the table. The next step is a little tricky, so take your time through this process. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure a half inch from the side inward to create a beveled edge. So I'm marking it with my needle tool, and then I'm going to put my ruler on my slab, and then I'm going to line up my X-Acto knife so the tip is at the corner, and then I'm going to pull at an angle 
Make sure that your blade is at an angle. If your blade's at an angle, then you will not have a beveled edge and all you've done is created a shorter slab. So then you're gonna flip your slab over and you are going to do the exact same thing to the other side. Make sure that you flip it because you want your angles to be the opposite. So a half inch, do this on both ends so you know where to line up your ruler. When you put your X-Acto knife on the tabletop, make sure, this sounds so strange, but make sure the blade, the cutting side of the blade is coming towards you. Make sure your fingers are out of the way um, whenever you go to cut this. I'm just cleaning up my slab because it got a little bit dirty because my table was dirty. I'm going to show you a super close-up segment of this. So once I have my ruler on the lines, I'm going to line up my blade. The blade is going toward your cut, so I'm cutting to the right, so my blade of my X-Acto knife is facing that direction. So I'm lining it up with the corner. I'm going to pull straight back, so my blade is actually physically sitting on the edge of this ruler right here. So it's literally sitting on it. You do not want any space. And then what I'm going to do is this is where it gets a little tricky. You want to keep the tip of the blade at the bottom edge of your slab. Okay, so it's a little bit hard to see, but it's going to stay lined up with this edge right here at the bottom of the slab. So hold your ruler, make sure it's lined up. Pull back on your blade and keep that tip of that blade lined up with the bottom front edge of your slab and cut all the way through. So line up your ruler, make sure the tip of your blade is at the corner of your slab and pull straight back. Keep the tip of the blade at the front bottom edge of the slab so that the blade is at an angle. This is very important. Okay, so now we're ready to put our first two pieces of our birdhouse together. We have the body of our birdhouse and we have the foot. So we know that wherever two pieces of clay touch, we have to score and slip. So we're gonna attach the foot of our birdhouse to the bottom edge. So, like the bottom edge of the slab. We're not setting the slab on top of the foot. So we're gonna score and slip the bottom edge. And we're also gonna score and slip the edge of our circle. So not the top, but the thin edge. Score the outside edge of your circle, not the flat part, but the edge. Once you've scored your pieces, you're going to grab your slip and you're going to apply slip everywhere that you have scored. All right, so now at this point, we're ready to actually put the wall and the foot together. So make sure that the foot of your birdhouse is on your work surface, your mobile work surface, so you can move it. This gets a little bit 
hard to move once you kind of have it going. Um, so we're also going to score and slip our beveled edges. So if you haven't done that, make sure that you do so. Um, it's not a huge deal if you forget, but it's just easier to do uh, before you actually start putting the structure together. So take a minute and get that procedure done. You're going to pick the wall of your birdhouse up and you're going to wrap the bottom section around the base of the foot. Try to keep the slab from falling over too bad. Um, it's pretty natural for it to do it um, as you're kind of placing it where it needs to go. You can see that mine's kind of falling a little bit towards me. Um, but for the most part, try to keep it pretty horizontal because your, you don't want to bend your clay too much because your clay does have you know memory and it will constantly always want to kind of fall that direction. So try to keep it as vertical as you possibly can. And if your angles don't meet up, that is okay. We can go ahead and trim that. Usually I make beginner stencils a little bit larger so they have a little room for error um, because it's a pretty common mistake for beginners to get their beveled edges wrong. So this just kind of allows us to have uh, a little wiggle room to fix it. So you're going to overlap your clay wall so you notice that my wall is overlapping. And then I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna cut at an angle all the way down the clay wall. And then once I pull that extra piece out, then my beveled angles will meet up. So if you do have to do this, you are going to have to score and slip once more so that piece will actually go together properly. So take a minute and go ahead and adjust your clay wall the way that you need to. We are now ready to actually compress the seat, these two seams together. So this is a really gentle process, so don't be overly aggressive. But I'm gonna have one hand on the inside or have my thumb on the inside and I am pressing with my pointer finger. I'm just kind of pressing that clay into the seam. It's okay if the slip kind of oozes out, don't worry about that. But you're just kind of pushing and use both hands to kind of push that seam together and then always kind of try to make sure you support from the inside as you press from the outside. So we're not really getting rid of the seam completely. We're just pressing the two beveled edges together. I'm going to keep compressing the seam until I feel like it's not going to come apart. So again, I'm not necessarily trying to get rid of the seam completely. I'm just um, applying pressure with my fingers from the inside and my fingers on the outside. Once you feel like you have that seam compressed enough, if you feel like you need to because you moved um, quite a bit of clay around, you can take a sponge and just kind of lightly go over it a little bit and kind of smooth it out if you want. But again, if the seam is there, not a huge deal. 
If you lose part of your texture in this area, you can take your texture, your stencil, and you can press it into the clay once more. But whatever you do, make sure that you are always supporting from the inside because your clay is really, really soft. And if you press too hard from the outside wall, you will collapse it. Now what we're going to do is we are going to score the inside of our wall right where the seam is. So you can see where the two connecting pieces are, so one side to the other. So make sure that when you're scoring the two pieces, you're pulling clay from one side of the slab to the other. When you are doing this, make sure you support your clay. Support from the inside and the outside. So I have my left hand on the outside clay wall as I'm scoring with my needle tool. You may have to kind of just grip the very, very end of your needle tool while you're doing this, kind of as an extension of your fingernail or something, um, because it's you hold it like a regular tool or a pencil. You won't be able to probably get your hand down in there. Now you're gonna grab a lump of clay, you don't need very much, and we're gonna make a coil for our attachment point. Remember that your coil does not have, necessarily have to be really pretty, but it does need to be even. So squeeze and rotate, remember to release your hand. Um, a good size is um, probably your ring finger, your pinky is probably a little too small, and your thumb is definitely too big. So think of the size of your ring finger or middle finger for the size of your coil and that would be good. If it's too big and it's bigger than your thumb or the size of your thumb, you're going to have way too much clay. It's going to be hard to kind of pull because the, the clay wall itself is really flimsy and you're going to have a big mound um, on the inside of your clay wall and it's just not going to look nice. Don't forget to add your slip, and then you're going to place your coil right on top of the seam. It is all right if you apply a little bit of pressure as you're adding the coil to flatten it out slightly. That is not a huge deal. It does not need to stay around because you're going to be smoothing it in anyway. If your coil is too big, you can go ahead and cut it off at this point, or you can leave it at its length. It doesn't matter. That's your call. When you're pressing the, clay, the coil into the clay wall, make sure you are supporting from the outside. If you feel like your coil is still protruding just a little bit too much, don't be afraid to go back in and just kind of flatten it out just a little bit with um, slight pressure, support from the outside before you pull the coil from, from one side of the seam to the other. All right, now we're going to get our modeling tool. It doesn't matter which material or which size that you use. And we're going to pull half the coil to one side and half the coil to the other. Make sure you're pulling the coil horizontally. Do not pull the coil vertically because that's just going to bust your seam. And then, as always, make sure you're supporting the outside wall. I cannot stress that enough. I know I seem really aggressive when I keep talking about it, but if you don't support that outside wall, the whole thing is just going to fall apart. You're going to bust the seam, it's going to tear, and um, you might be able to fix it, but you might not. So you're using the modeling tool as an extension of your fingertips. So you're probably going to have to use or hold it kind of at the end and apply pressure when you're pulling the coil, smooth from one side, go all the way up, and then smooth the other side, go all the way up, and then we'll switch over to our fingertips and our rib tool.
Once you have the coil smoothed in from using your modeling tool and your fingertips, you're going to use the rounded side of your rib tool, again supporting the clay wall, and you're going to compress the coil and the smoothing that you've just done um, going horizontally back and forth and then you can use the fat rounded end of your rib tool and go horizontally and pull the clay. So it's nice and smooth and you cannot see where that seam is. If you can't see the seam, then you know you have attached your coil properly. Okay, now get ready because we are about to flip our whole birdhouse over. Hold it with both hands, cupping it and flip it. So you're putting it on the rim and now we need to seal up the bottom seam. So if you feel like you need to score and slip and add a coil here, you can. And if your clay has moved into the stiff clay or leather hard stage, I would probably strongly suggest that. But because we're working with our clay with a pretty high moisture level, we're gonna be able just to pull that clay from the edge in towards the middle. And you can use your fingertip or your modeling tool. Once you've done this, then you're going to use your rib tool and your sponge to compress this clay. And if the seam is completely gone, then you do not need to add an attachment coil. But if you can see that seam or you have any divots or it seems a little bit weak where that's, that um, separation from the foot and the clay wall is, then I would strongly urge you to add a coil in that area. Once you have that finished, you're gonna flip, you kinda kinda, you can kind of adjust the foot if you want to, kind of compress it and get it rounded back out. Then you're gonna flip it back over and you're gonna store it on its actual foot. Do not add any water to this. You're just going to simply cover it in plastic until you're ready to move on to the next step. 